Whistleblowers are on the job day in and day out in corporate America as well as within government. And since this president has occupied the Oval Office, we've had an endless stream of clients. We have no shortage of work. And I'll just mention a few, but they are a tiny few. And keep in mind, despite the fact that we have 50 to 100 new clients a year, probably more, we only help one out of 20 people that come to our doors. We also had um, Rick Piltz, who represented Rick Piltz. Rick Piltz used to work at the agency that uh, uh, the Climate Change uh, Science Office, uh, and his job was to edit the public, or edit the $2 billion worth of federal grants going into climate change every year, or, or looking at climate change every year. And um, what he would find is he would gather all this information from 13 different federal agencies. They would then produce a report uh, for Congress and eventually for the public as well. And then after, get, you know, after getting all these, uh, these uh, scientists and all these agents to, agencies to agree on the report, then of course it would go to the White House, to the, uh, uh, to the Council on Environmental Quality. Um, where a guy, a chief of staff there by the name of Phil Cooney, who was the top oil industry lobbyist uh, for many years at the Petroleum Institute before he received this you know, job at the White House to essentially do what he was doing. And um, so, the, it, the, so what would happen is his reports would go over to the, to the White House and then they would be edited, heavily ed edited, so that mentions of Arctic, you know, three and a half pages on the Arctic is just, you know, just eliminated, you know, sliced, those, those pages are gone. So we don't talk about the Arctic or polar bears. Um, then, of course, all the different adjectives are changed so that it becomes a little bit more questionable about whether global warming is actually happen happening. And then, then some other editing happens, and then all of a sudden it becomes questionable, questionable about whether human activity was having anything to do with global warming. Um, so Rick Piltz decided to blow the whistle and did. And as we know, he, he and others uh, has changed the course of history for the last two years in terms of helping as, you know, or, or being catalysts toward uh, changing and uh, bringing to national attention the problem that we have with global warming, and it's certainly the problem with this administration and global warming. Another very related whistleblower is Dr. James Hansen, who we represented. Uh, he was uh, in, um, I think he, he's been blowing the whistle since, you know, since the 80s, uh, starting with the Reagan administration. He blew the whistle all the way through the Clinton administration as well. Uh, and then, of course, in I think it was 2005, he began. Uh, her, he said uh, that that was the hottest year in the history of the world, and that really, really set the White House off. And so, what they decided to do is, with him as well as actually hundreds of other scientists, they decided to re redo or rewrite the rules in terms of public uh, 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 public affairs. And now, all of a sudden, Dr. Hansen, the, probably the world's most renowned scientist at NASA on climate change, is all of a sudden having to report to a 24-year-old political appointee who supposedly graduated from Texas A&M. Then we find out he hadn't even graduated. You know, he just lied on his resume. And so he had to report to this 24-year-old every time a journalist called him uh, to ask him questions about global warming. And so he would then have to call this uh, appointee, uh, and the appointee would have first right of refusal to, to select someone else to answer those questions. Uh, and then, of course, if um, Dr. Hansen was going to go ahead with the interview, he would have to submit to having a public affairs person in the, in the uh, interview as well. Uh, taking notes, and um, I think there was a 60 Minutes piece on both Rick Pilts as well as Dr. Hansen, 
and the 60 Minutes camera swung over to the public affairs person who was like, you know, sitting in the room, uh, because of course those were the rules uh, that were developed, not only at that agency, but those other 13 agencies as well, having anything to do with the science of global warming. Now the Whistleblower Protection Act, as I mentioned, doesn't work. The Whistleblower Protection Act was passed uh, originally in 1989. It was supposedly improved in 1994, and since that time has completely been neutered as well. Uh, but finally, the House of Representatives uh, has, ha has passed the Whistleblower Pro uh, Protection Enhancement Act, and this legislation for the first time you know, has um, given some ray of hope that federal whistleblowers are going to have some level of protection. The Sarbanes-Oxley Act, uh, Act as well provided whistleblower protection for corporate whistleblowers, but our federal judiciary has pretty much neutered that legislation as well. And so over the next two years, there's going to be, certainly on our part, and hopefully on the part of many people in this room, there's going to be an attempt to get back to a level of protection for corporate uh, whistleblowers. Uh, we had hoped with the passage of Sarbanes-Oxley that, that, uh, that we would have federal juries that would be deciding these cases and, and that's what our goal is um, over the next two years. But whatever happens in terms of our law reform efforts, you can bet that whistleblowers are not going away. They will not go away. And I'm reminded, actually, of what Senator Bobby Kennedy uh, said uh, when he visited Soweto in South Africa uh, in 1976, or 1966, I mean. Um, when Bobby Kennedy was there, he, he met with the families of people who lost people uh, to the struggle for uh, the end of apartheid. And he compared their struggle to those, you know, to the throwing of rocks into a pond. And he said, with every act of defiance, there were more rocks thrown into the pond until someday there would be a huge swell that would then blow over and knock over the walls of injustice that then existed. Whistleblowers are doing the same thing. Thank you. Thank you.